Welcome back, welcome to the second part of this tutorial series. In the first video, we created a reusable subprogram to create these kinds of sci fi head up display graphics. In this video, we will improve this loop and add a few more features. First, I want to be able to give the animation a rotation offset. Second, there might be graphics where we don't want to see the lines sliding around the circle, but instead we simply want the elements to appear. And third, I want to be able to have the rotation go in the opposite direction. Let's jump back into Blender. Now, all the animations that we use with this uh, program, they always start at rotation zero, basically because we're mapping uh, the frame number to a rotation between 0 and 360. Now, of course, there's several ways to do this. We could add our offset to these numbers. Maybe that's just what we want to do. Let's see. Let's try it. OK, so we want a new parameter, which should be a float. We call that rot or something like that. And we will plug that rotation offset into our output min. And then we need a number math node. We have to add to this rotation offset of 360 degrees. And that's our output max. Now up here, we have this new rotation offset parameter. And let's see, let's start back here on frame one with our circles, which is uh, this one here. Now by changing the rotation offset, I can change this rotation. I still have this visible here. Okay, so this is already interesting, but that's not what we want. We're changing the map range output here, which is the basis for um, where the dots are placed in their final location. So this is not the way to do it. This map range should always map between 0 and 360 for the full circle. We're going to have to do something down here. Maybe we just add some to this rotation value here. So this is the rotation that we get from our calculation. Now let's take a rotation Euler math. Let's add a rotation. So we need to combine Euler, use the rotation offset here, add it to this rotation. Uh, now we have a whole bunch of lines and it's sort of not really visible anymore what's happening. Let's organize it a little bit. Okay, so now we have a rotation offset uh, that we can change here. And we're adding this rotation offset amount of degrees to the final position of our dots. And now they start down here and go around the circle and fill the circle. Cool. We already improved our reusable loop. The lines start at the top. The circles start at angle 100. Or let's start at 90. So over here. Cool. First improvement done. Second improvement. Um, like I said in the last part, maybe we don't want this sliding in dot. This one here, look at this. It slides over and then it drops off a dot. Maybe we don't want that. Maybe we just want the dots to appear in their final positions. Of course, we can do that also using the object visibility. Okay. What do we have? We have a final rotation output here. So this is the rotation, basically the, the angle uh, that our rotation currently is at, at the certain frame number. 
And with this minimum node here, we make sure that the dots are being dropped off at the locations that we calculated here in step size and then multiply it by the index number. So this is the rotation from the animation. What if we take this and make sure that the object is not visible using this node before the rotation has reached the final location of the individual dot. Wow, that sounds complicated. Now, like I said, there's probably many ways, but let's just think about it. Let's take the rotation and I'm just gonna copy this node. Let's take our rotation, divide it by the step size, which is uh, this guy. So now we have a floating point number here that we can round down, which is floor. Where is it? Floor. And then we take that, multiply it again by the step size and use this to be the rotation value. Oh, oh already works. Cool. So now we don't have that sliding thing going around. We just have the lines and the dots appear at their final location. But now I kind of messed up my uh, sub program because now both sub programs are like that. Maybe I want this one to slide in and the other one to not slide in. So I want to have a switch on my sub program, a boolean that I can switch on and off, call it slide. And I only want to perform this operation down here if slide is off. Okay, now we need to do some Boolean magic. How can I organize this a little better? Maybe move it down here. So this is the operation that we need in here. And if slide is on, then we want this value. And we get the sliding and if slide is off we want this value where we don't have the sliding cool we can do that with using a boolean switch place it somewhere so if slide is true then we take this value and if slide is false we want this value and this is the output for our animation. Okay, sliding, sliding, sliding. Let's take the lines, make more lines and switch off slide. And now we have both animations. The circle here is sliding in. The lines, these are just appearing. Cool. We totally improved our reusable loop here. Wow, this is a bit messy. Let me clean this up quick. Okay, so this is a little bit more organized now. Cool, we already added two new features. Now the last feature that we want to add to this is what if we wanted maybe a third um, graphics building up in a circle here let's do something new maybe hmm maybe make a triangle so i add a circle set the vertices to three gives me a triangle in edit mode add a face uh, also in edit mode scale it down maybe move it up to here. I hope that's still visible in the camera. Oh, let's just move it down here. Okay, then we copy this, plug in our circle. This is not good, let's call it triangle. triangle. Plug that in. Let's do 16 triangles. 
reuse our sub program for these and so this gives us the same animation let's start this animation at let's say 100 oops start 100 and I don't know 180 give it a rotation offset of 360 divided by 3 and hide our original triangle object so now we have this um, we're kind of missing a material the triangle needs to be glowing too okay so now we have those triangles going around that's kind of a lot let's just do 10 okay this looks interesting now like i said i want those triangles to not rotate this way like the other two animations they're always going counterclockwise i want those to go this way so clockwise now we couldn't we could do this of course with our output max set to minus 360 but then we also have to change around all sorts of things in here and it gets really complicated a much easier trick or actually a cheat i think is to just flip it or rotate the whole thing on the y-axis right so let's say we take this look at this object what if we just rotate it 180 on the y-axis so over this way then it looks like we're starting over here and this goes this way so this is going to go this way hmm let's do that so we're cheating here we know that we're always in the center with our animation and we just flip it on the y-axis and of course we want a switch for this again so that up here we can say checkbox on or off if we want to reverse the animation direction okay first let's flip the stuff around now there is a problem here if i just switch on flipping on the y and maybe plug in some Euler math again here and rotate on the Y you notice this is not the way to go why is that well because if we rotate all the objects on the Y and on the C which is our animation basically we're always rotating them in their original location and their original location is always this thing here this so we're taking this one and rotating it on the y and then we're rotating it on the c to make our hud animation so that doesn't work we have to we can't just rotate the object in one step on the y and the c this does not work instead we have to chain two rotations together first we rotate according to our animation here and then we flip it over on the y-axis how can we do that well we're gonna have to switch over to a matrix math here so instead of this object transform output this is a final transformation output we're, with this note we're changing these values basically now we can't chain together several transformations here which is exactly our our problem now so instead of the object transform output let's think of something else first let's create a matrix compose for rotation with this rotation so now we have the rotation in a matrix now we have to create a rotation matrix for the flipping rotation for flipping it over on the y-axis so we compose a rotation that flips 180 on the y okay i don't want 
these lines here. So this is that, and now we can do a matrix transform. We take this matrix, transform it, or add this rotation on top of it. And now instead of an object transform output, we need an object matrix output, which does the same thing. We take this object and we transform it, but now we transform it using a matrix. So, um, look at that. We already have all of our animations going the other way. Huh, interesting. But we only want this feature if we switch on our switch that we haven't added yet. So let's plug a new Boolean parameter in here, call it the reverse. And we only want this to happen if a reverse is on. So again, we take a switch, plug this in here. We, if it's true, we want 180. If it's false, we want zero. And this is what we have to plug into a combine Euler into the Y, use degrees. And that's the rotation offset or, or the flipping basically that we add with a transform node to the matrix after we do this rotation then we do the flipping on the Y if the switch is on. So let's see if that works. They're all switched on now. Let's switch them all off. Okay, so now all the animations go counterclockwise. Let's do the triangles clockwise. Oops, I have to switch off this here. So the triangles go clockwise in the other direction. Cool stuff. All right, I think our reusable, what is this? Oh, the visibility. Right, I should plug that back in here because, yep, the triangles are always visible. To plug that back in here and this in here so that we have them appear on the start frame of the animation. One is going this way, the other one is going that way. Cool, let's also switch on reverse here. That probably looks cool. This goes that way, this goes this way, and then the triangles go that way. And at frame 200, everything is done. That's the second part of this tutorial series done. Our reusable rotate in node for HUD graphics is already full of useful features. Let me know in the comments below what other interesting effect we could add to this. In the next part, we will create a different kind of subprogram for a bounce in animation. I hope you like this series so far, and if you do, please give the videos a thumbs up. Subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss when the next video comes out. I will see you over there. Crispy out.